throughout your stats course, you're going to be looking at the results of a lot of uh, studies, research studies that were done. And those studies are going to be focused on one of two different groups, or they're going to make use of data from one of two different groups, either a population, actually let's uh, just leave it as population, or a sample. Okay, so we need to understand what the difference is between these two and uh, why we might use one instead of another. Now, these two terms are very closely related, um, but they're somewhat opposite in their nature. A population basically is large and all-inclusive. A sample is usually smaller and does not include everybody, but let's write this out uh, in more formal definitions. So the population would be all individuals of interest. Okay, now population is a word that's used uh, in, in common language, and so certainly you're going to be familiar with this term, and the idea of it representing all individuals is typically what we think when we think of a population. If you think of the population of a country like Canada, all of the citizens of that country make up the population. So certainly this concept of all-inclusive or including everybody, that's what a population typically is used to express. However, there is this part over here, and this is going to be very important for your course. Because populations don't necessarily need to be huge, they don't necessarily need to be as large as entire nations. You might be performing a study that is trying to describe nobody more than just the people on your street or the people in your class. As long as you have all of the individuals involved, then you will have the entire population. If your class, uh, let's say you have a very small class, there's only 12 people, as long as they all contribute their data to your study, then you would have a study that was performed on the entire population, even though your population is only 12 people. You could have a population of three people. The population just has to include all individuals of interest as you as you define your, your interest in your study. So if your study is on Canadians, you have to include all Canadians' data. But if your study is trying to um, describe some characteristic of um, people named Susan who take statistics in their first year at university, then there might only be two of them, as long as you have all of them, or all of those people that fit exactly that definition, you have the population. Now, we want, with our studies, to be able to make comments on what the entire population is doing. However, populations typically are very large. They are usually large. And as a result, it's difficult to observe the individuals directly. I should say all individuals directly. Let's say uh, we go back to our example where I talk about uh, the citizens of Canada. Now imagine you want to perform some sort of a study of the citizens of Canada. You want to be able to make a statement about, uh, let's say, what, what is the average income of Canadian citizens. Well, imagine you have um, the greatest possible resources to do this. Let's say you are part of the government, you have uh, full reign over how to conduct this. Um, some countries uh, enact legislation that says that um, it's a criminal offense if you don't answer the survey or the census. So let's say you've got as much money as you need to be able to conduct this study, and you even have um, uh, fines for those that don't take part in the study you're still not going to be able to observe all of the individuals directly. You're not going to be able to get everybody involved. The reason for that is, how are you going to contact everybody from the population? Usually what happens is they mail out a census form, and not everybody has a proper mailing address. Or even if they do, some of them will, uh, some of the mail is going to get lost. Even if that didn't happen, some people are not going to be home. They might be on vacation at the time that the census comes out. Some people might be working in other countries. Some people might be sick and in the hospital. Some people are going to be born during the time that it takes to mail out the survey, and some people will have died. So it's 
difficult, sometimes impossible, to observe all individuals in a population directly. So even though a population is what we would like to be able to comment on when we're finished our research, typically we end up having to be satisfied with a sample. Now, if a population is all individuals, a sample is not all individuals. I'll say it's any group that is selected from the population. Okay, so a sample is any group that's selected from the population. That means it's going to be smaller than the population. I'll just write population like POP apostrophe N. It's smaller than the population, which makes it easier to collect the data from. So certainly looking at a smaller group is easier to handle. It costs less money. Um, there's more of a chance you're going to be able to actually get the data from everybody, especially if it's a very small sample. The problem is, though, small samples um, may not properly represent the population. If you don't include many of the people from the population, you're going to get uh, very skewed results. You might not get a true picture of what's happening in the population. Imagine you wanted to take a sample of how people uh, did on a test in your class, but you only asked two people. Well, only two people. They could be the two people that did the worst on the test. They could be the two people that uh, did the best on the test. You could get a very skewed result. You could get um, a very non-representative view. It would be much better if you took the largest possible sample that you could handle. So we try to take larger samples because larger samples better represent, they do a better job of representing the population. Okay, so to summarize, we have populations and samples. They both describe groups of individuals. A population includes all of the individuals that we've defined um, of being of interest in our study. Whereas a sample is anything less than all individuals. It's any group that is selected from the population, whether it's big or it's small. As long as it's not the entire population, it's a sample. So populations include everybody. Samples is anything less than all of the individuals in the population.